19 summer. And I'm Atlas joined by LS for game number two between the Afrika Freaks and Darm One Gaming. And despite Darm One being at the top of the ladder in the LCK currently, they just fell. The hands of Afrika Freaks' unorthodox use of a Baron Buff. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's a very interesting way of putting it. So, Afrika found themselves with two Barons unable to push realistically with either one of them, and then against the Elder, nothing really happened either. Yep. And then there was one major team fight at the bottom try brush that just ended up resulting in Afrika. It did. Eventually winning the game. So, the draft also didn't really surface or play a part in game number one, which is really surprising between Korean teams. Yeah, no, it was a really strange one because I didn't feel like there was like a key pick that slipped through the draft or something like that that uh, Afrika were able to leverage right. or anything like that. So it might be that Afrika just run back the same bands and look to see what they can do. Well, these bands are a little bit interesting right here. Ninja's being banned away as Akali and Kennen bite the dust. Nico and now Jace being banned away. So there's still Yumi is on the table. I believe Yumi was, uh, yeah, left all the way through the draft. Yeah. In uh, game number one. An odd situation, to be sure, as it's finally going to be banned now on the blue side. The final ban now will be the Corky. Understandable against just anyone, and also especially against Shoemaker. Ezreal. Oh god, it got through instantly this Instantly locked in. And uh, a comfortable one, but of course mostly a pick away. Yeah. I mean, Nuclear isn't one of our uh, key Ezreal players. Has of course played it a few times uh, so far this season. I'm not entirely sure what the win rate is. Let me just uh, have a look. He's played it a whole bunch, but uh, a few of the losses for Dom 1 have been with Nuclear's Ezreal. 11 times so far this season, Ooh. in fact, is most played as the Kaiser and the Gragas have been locked in. This could just be the bottom lane, or this could be the mind games of Yukao wanting to bring out that Yasuo and Dread focusing mid this time around. Yeah. And the Kaisa really, really good at dissuading further backline picks on the side of Dom1 as she has easy access to Ezreal already. Vladimir comes out though, and the Vlad was banned second round. In our game number one, this could be Noggery just getting a bit mad, wanting to bring out his uh, favorite champion yeah. and school some kids. And we'll have to see what Keen's answer will be to it. Maybe he just actually picks up a Aatrox. Beryl picked Tom Kench again. Yeah, he did. I don't really want to say anything more about it. I do like that Tom is on the rift. He's a majestic his win river rate beast. His is 50% right now, so if he loses this game, it's, uh, it's, it's it's disaster yeah, stations. Yeah. It's like saying that Tom Ketch is not necessarily the best pick. Right. Talia is going to be locked in, so it looks like that will be the bottom lane for the Afrika Freaks. Yukal, I mean, if he has access to his Talia, he generally picks it up. It was banned. It had to be banned second round uh, in game number one. Of yeah. course, the bottom lane and the top laner were picked in the first round of picks for the Afrika Freaks, but this time Yukal gets his hands on his favorite champion, and the Karthus is then going to be banned out of the way, and there was an intelligent comment that I read on uh, on Reddit just uh, about the post game of our first game, just talking about Canyon and his abilities on champions outside of the Karthus. And uh, I have to agree that when he's not on the Skittle wielder himself, he does look like a step below uh, his performances. His usual self. Yeah. And so now. We do have to wonder what will be the jungle choice for Dom1. As junglers continue to get pinched here by Afrika as Jarvan now bites the dust. And Afrika could now pick another jungler away as well. So in theory, three jungle bands to yeah. come out if you include that. The Camille actually going to be banned against the Afrika Freaks. Snoggery, of course, feeling like playing the Vlad this time. Ah, yes, Diana, yes. obviously. Diana against the the Vladimir. That's exactly what you need. Mm -hmm. Elise would be really interesting, and that would all but signify that Atrox is probably going to be coming from the top lane, even though he hasn't been picked up yet. 
And so now they choose the Elise so that maybe Dom One can't pick it, even though it doesn't have the best synergy with the current laners on the side or that they've selected. That being said, Keen can go towards another one of these early CC top laners if he wants to. Canyon back to an old favorite in the Lee Sin, but he's well and truly uh, down the tier list Ooh. as far as the current meta is concerned. A lot of poke now available as Showmaker once again locks in the LeBlanc. Didn't really have too many uh, bad things to say about how he was wielding it, Ooh. as uh, this would be curious. Keen Yasuo? No. That would be so fun. All right. But then that would be support Elise, which uh, only Lehens does that. All right, so uh, it is the a Aatrox, Aatrox, like you were talking. Yeah. It's going to be locked in. And a little bit surprising, actually, that they chose to ban away the Camille and the Renekton instead of thinking about Aatrox. Aatrox regarded as one of the best answers to Vladimir. Yeah, comfortably uh, yeah. heals up alongside the Vlad. Especially now, now that that's been boosted. And Dread has the Elise once more, so he can have the similar early Alice. game that he shows. Alice, come, come yeah, down. Yeah, man. Atrox lost his revive, he's nerfed. Right, okay, yeah. It doesn't matter that he heals for more and that his revive never mattered anyway. Yeah, okay. okay. So. Okay, thank sorry. You. No, that was sorry, okay. that point, yes. So nerfed Atrox, just gonna get trashed by uh, the Vladimir. Nerfed Atrox. Nuffed. Nuffed. <laughs> <laughs> he got nuffed. He got it's when nuffed. you try to nerf him, but you buff him out by accident. Yeah. You know oh, how that happens? They nuffed up that one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you hate it when you nuff him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I feel like this is going in a direction that's... Uh, <laughs> let's check the terms of service before we talk about being nuffed again. <laughs> As uh, Vladimir, Lee Sin, LeBlanc, Ezreal, and Tom Kench will be your Dom 1 lineup, of course. Most of these players picking the champions that they want to play at this point in time. Of course, Nogari very famous on the Vladimir. And interestingly, this is a team composition that it has a very, very powerful two-item spike across all the champions. Then it begins to essentially play out the same way even as they continue to pick up items. And so it's not really that scary. There's not too many new surprising breakpoints. But on the flip side, there's a lot more scaling involved. Yeah, and also a lot more pick potential and disruption with the explosive cask and things like that. Let's get into game two. The Freak of Fans, very loud here on a beautiful evening. In Lowell Park and Runeterra alike, you are walking over a ward. See if Freak of Freaks are considering getting some deep vision down. And our Nuclear finds himself his first Q and gets a ward for it. That's called high rolling. That is. He's going to have another one. Okay. Cheeky devil. Well. Let's see what is going to happen here in the early game because Infernal Dragon is going to be the first one. Ooh. Yeah, and with the bottom lane that Afrika has, it shouldn't be that difficult for them with Talia and Elise to actually manage to capture that relatively early on. And interestingly, we have one of the few types of team compositions where all five champions really do utilize the internal. Oh yeah. So this should be a battle between both of these. See whether it is going to be top laners making their way down. Speaking of top laners, we've got Kleptomancy being picked up by Noggery once again. Yeah. Not a hell of a lot of respect that this man has for the opposition, as uh, Beryl's going to take a hell of a lot of damage. Wanting to get that empowered shot, but not able to do it just yet. Is aiming on his arcade Kaiser. Shout out to LS giving away uh, skins. Oh, you know what? You just reminded me. I think that maybe they're expiring sometime. I gotta give them away. Yeah, gotta give away oh, them. Oh, uh, I'm gonna give away a lot on Twitter after. Mm -hmm. Can I have one? No, can't give them. Can't just give them to friends, okay? Which is why I'm gonna give you one. We're not friends. Okay. So if you <laughs> gave me one, then you'd be proving that we're not friends. <laughs> exactly. Oh, dang it! It's a lose lose. <laughs> 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 okay. okay. Nogri with control of the wave. Uh, the old melee versus ranged conundrum. But I should get better and better for Keen as this game goes on. Deep vision coming down. You can see Amy getting one uh, well and truly on the Krogs. He gets a vision there as Keen diving forward, Ooh. actually, getting a lot of damage with all three of the procs of the Q. Is. No, Golden Prestige Atrox is allowed. 
in competitive, right? I mean, isn't that uh, what Kane's using? No, he's just using blood. Uh, oh, the regular one. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, no, you can use Golden Prestige. Uh, I believe Sword uh, used to use it when he was uh, playing Griffin. Man, Riot Show must incentivize that, you know? Oh, and okay, we've, we've spoken about this matchup, the matchup between Lee Sin and Elise for oh, many, man. many years. Oh, and uh, no. if one of them face checks the other one, the face checker dies. That's generally how oh. that one works. Oh. As Canyon choose to take, t chooses oh. sorry, to take the other route. Actually takes the really safe route and is gonna avoid the Elise. So you can see that Dread, he only has three camps consumed right now. He is gonna get the Scuttle Crab, that'll be his fourth camp. And if he can get to the other one, then it won't be that bad of an opening, even though he was going for some gambles early on. Well, you count. Been talking about this a lot. Was talking about it with the Korean casters backstage as well. Just now that Talia has been re-enabled, I think it's a, just a direct buff to the Afrika Freaks because Yukal is our best Talia player. With Talia one trick, that was certainly how he played. As Beryl's going to get devour, uh, get the devour off, but not after Nuclear takes way too much damage there. Yeah. Thought that, that was looking like a good trade for the Ezreal. Uh, as it turns out, not so much if Senen's going oh. to be there. Okay, well, Nuclear has Teleport, and Sir Thomas does have Exhaust, but with the cannon having died, I feel like Afrika, they, they have two options. You either let this wave come in and force Nuclear and Barrel to overextend, or you try to make a gank happen. And that was really good, what Senen can try to do there. If he body slams in and he doesn't auto, but Dom Juan Gaming does, the minions will stop aggroing each other, and start attacking Ezreal, yep. so the wave pushes into them that much faster, but Elise recalled, so. Yeah, going to be going towards the top side of the map, where Nogari does have pretty decent lead building. Elise wanting to help him out, as uh, Sengon Pool comes in, but Keen doesn't find the third hit of the Q. Crimson Rush will get Nogari's health bar back to a more comfortable state. Back ping onto the Elise, not sure whether that's because vision is available. Uh, on Dom one side, or whether it was Keen telling Dread that nah, don't really need a gank right now. There is vision, so that was a Dom one ping. So. Yep. Keen with the wave pushing forward. Nogari will have that one in pretty nice position. Ooh. The seismic shove barely missing onto Showmaker. That trade back of damage would have been very important. Important there for Yukal. The uh, threads the volley on through, unraveled Earth, then to follow. Cool sounding ability. Yeah, name. it is. It definitely is. As Yukal, he's going to get this crash on the next wave. Yep. Ooh, Chain going to be sidestepped as Senen moves yep. on in, but Showmaker moves back immediately from that distortion and is otherwise not going to be punished. Yukal will miss out on some experience, though. Well, he's looking for a back timing as Dread up into the air, but has to come back down again. No flash expended just yet. Great body slam onto Showmaker as the seismic shove onto Beryl. Could be a big problem here for Darmon. Yukal still looking for more. Wants the next shove, but doesn't have the cooldown back available. And now at the end of all of this, though, Showmaker, he's going to get first action back inside of the lane. He is down in CS, but I believe that he's up in experience. As Afrika now, knowing that Beryl was chunked as heavy as they did, they start the Infernal Dragon, but... Spellbook's available, although they don't seem to be sniffing it out. Yeah, they don't actually know. Uh, it is resetting in a really weird way. Spider yeah. is confusing the hell out of this dragon, but it is going to be secured. Dread gets the smite off, and that ward comes in. Very depressing time timing for Damwon fans. Yeah, that's a, it's such a powerful first Infernal Dragon coming in at seven minutes. Every single laner now just essentially got a first blood almost in a way in yeah. terms of battle stats. Normally you get a first blood, you get a long sword or something or another Doron's ring. Yep. So At definitely, point, yeah. Actually, uh, it's going to be doing double duty as well here for, you know, champions like the Kaiser. You've already mentioned that uh, 
Infernal Drake is very, very strong as Dread just walks on in, isn't Ooh. going to be oh. able to secure the red, but does find Canyon and Blast Cone gets Canyon to safety. Half his health bar expended, but uh, he got what he came for. Is There's the flash body slam, but Beryl, he has the Devourer available. Now Senen's trying to do battle. Whoa. Killer Instinct comes down, misses the Void Seeker, but it doesn't matter. Beryl can't do anything as this time Kenshin first blood goes to Kaisa of all champions. And that's really good for Afrika Nuclear. He doesn't have teleport available, so he's going to miss out on quite a lot of minions down there in the bottom lane. Kaisa going to just recall right now with Gragas. Picks herself up, a long sword, and just take a look at this. Senen sensing lethal, knowing that, okay, this is going to be the last wave that they're trying to crash before backing up. Yeah. Smells blood in the water. He just pounces on it immediately. I really like that forward thinking as well, because often you've got a Tom Kench there. You're like, I don't want to go for an engage because Devour is available. Yeah. But instead, Senen's like, well, if he devours, then I follow and murder him. And that's just how it's going to go. And that's exactly what they did. Mm -hmm. Really nicely done. From the Afrika Freaks bottom lane, we saw Deft and Tucson uh, piloting this particular combo against Griffin earlier on when Griffin were looking undefeatable and able to get that 2v2 kill that uh, I think Papa was talking about last week. Yeah. Very impressive. A lot of explosive damage potential. Ooh. That particular champion is Keen. World Ender does come down. Very early pull as Dread comes in. Good knock up from Keen as well. Almost the 1v1 as Dread was almost unnecessary. Just a cheeky Q to guarantee a bit of extra gold from the assist. And now Afrika. With all of these little small advantages building up, center naming, they just have to fade this gank right now. Talia actually cancels her recall. I'm not actually sure what Ukel's doing right now, but aiming and Senen under no danger. Nuggery doesn't have teleport. This is this is a bad news bear. Yeah. Up in top lane. Real Keen, bad um, scenario. Keen, Keen has uh, the purple summoner spell. This, this is like like uh. You get a special trip to Ikea, you know, and you're allowed Ooh. to just, like, take take things. Yeah. That's what he is. Like, he's there's no one there. There's no stewardess to stop him from just stealing all of the stuff in the shop, man. All them plates are going to be taken. Only one goes over to Keen. He's not a greedy man. And he's going to go back, get himself an opportune back timing. 20% CDR from his items alone, meaning that this Aatrox is going to be spamming them spells. Aiming. Every time one of these Void Seekers lands, it feels like he's got items, item advantages now in order to play super aggressively afterwards. Killer Instinct is always there to threaten. Well, right now the mid lane is still just a battle of ping pong. And Yukal and Showmaker not really able to influence that much on the map, but they really don't well, need There's the to. barrel, the, the Ignite's down. down as well. Barrel not going to eat enough of that Grey health, and Aiming picks up his second kill of the game. The Ezreal this time is just going to look on in oh, horror, man. and he's now probably going to join his support in the Death Chamber. Volatile Spiderling comes in, the Flash down as well as the Arcane Shift, and Nuclear has to use everything to get out of that one. He's not going to be able to save the plates from falling, though. As yet another branch of the Darm One IKEA is being raided for all of their crockery. Yeah, and that was a little bit surprising. Uh, Afrika, they, they played the kill onto Barrel really well, but not the one onto Nuclear. I've seen this one before. Okay. This time the cocoon lands, and uh, that's not a replay, guys. That is just a dead Ezreal and a three kill Kaisa. That's going to be a five plate Kaisa in addition to the three kills. Aiming pretty strong. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's all right. Yeah. And that is not the best ultimate from Nuggery. Well, he wants to plop Shelly down up here on the top side. Keen has teleport available. Not likely that this tower is actually fully taken. Teleport, teleport coming yeah. in, but look at LeBlanc and Tom. Yep, they are going to be making their way oh, up. Man. Keen just desperate to try and take down this one, and Keen wishes. Oh, he the had, healing. Yeah, okay. Infernal Chains has to be flashed out of the way of. Wants to be able to get it. The stopwatch that he just picked up is going to be utilized. The chains land, though. And Yukal 1v4. He wants to find Canyon. Can he actually thread the volleys is the question. The Devour from Beryl. They're so low under this Whoa. turret as Noggery flashes in. The Sanguine Pool keeps him alive. Dread should be falling as well. And Showmaker secures it with the proc of the chains. And True Shot Barrage helping out. A big swing in favor of Darwin. Another teleport from the Afrika Freaks is aiming 
tries to join the fight, but the Void Seeker isn't going to find anything. And he's just going to have to settle for these minions. And so we can take a look at probably all of that after this replay is we see the kill onto Barrel. He ends up going down really quickly. I'm curious if this replay is going to follow it up. And it doesn't actually go to where they make the mistake. So anyways, at this point, Elise ends up flashing the wall. Chilling smites him, plays around, uses no CC as CC. Eventually, they end up bringing him down. Kai'Sa had ultimate anyway. And then right here, inside of this replay, Kai'Sa has teleport available during all of this. Doesn't end up channeling it. And then it would be Kame, an all-man save Keen. Had Keen just drawn this much aggro and Talia stayed in mid, Talia pushed in the minion waves and got turret plates and then Dread just comes up and picks up the pieces, it would have all been fine. But instead, they were failing extremely charitable today. Yeah. And, uh, okay. Canyon's dead. Um, we playing Cluedo. Uh, what, are, what is Cluedo? Tell me. Cluedo is a is a game. Showmaker is dead. He's Showma gonna get. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, That's oh, some oh, tricky oh. business you lied there. To me. Not entirely sure where he went, but uh, I thought that that was actually the real one. It was the deceived version of the LeBlanc. Oh, Void Seeker is gonna find him. No killer instinct available, but the flash is there from aiming. He should have a Q. He should have some autos. Ooh. And now he might even have a blue buff. I picked up 400 gold as well on that kill. As now, Clown Dragon is going to be picked up. I, I think that Kais is a little bit big. I'm not entirely sure. 3,000 gold lead. It's, yeah. it's something, you know. Press? Uh, well, it's, uh, it's about 2,900 plus 100, so I'm impressed. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's how that's, that works. That's some quick math. <laughs> be here all night. Damn. Yeah. Which you, might only be this I game. I mean, I was going to so, say, it yeah. might just be one more. Yeah. Feeling like a faster night okay. than we otherwise would have expected. I thought that SKT King Zone was going to go a little bit longer than it did, but nope, we seem to be speedrunning ELCK for day one of week eight. 4CS is going to be the lead for Noggery that immediately gets uh, completely evened out by Keen, who's uh, made it towards the bottom side before Noggery gets back. He doesn't quite have uh, any completed items yet. He's got bits of everything. <coughs> Wanting to complete a full black cleaver or something, actually goes back and gets himself a vamp se scepter, so it looks like it is going to be the Death's Dance that comes in uh, before the black cleaver. Yep. Two items already completed on Kai'Sa. Ezreal still has yet to complete one. So, uh -huh. this will definitely be interesting as a freaking out, they look to raise the top tier one turret. He, he technically, I guess, has like one and a half, but doesn't have the yeah. transformation. No, no rounding up here today. All right, sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. sorry. Yeah. I'll try it without the rounding up. My right. cup is so half full. No, it's not. It is. You don't even have a cup. That's the. That's my point. I don't even have to have a cup for it to be half you full. You have a bottle. Yeah. I see it right now. It has water in it. And look, see. That's like half a quarter full. full. No, no, no. Half no, full. no, no, no. That's definitely a quarter full. No, no, no. It's, half it's full. all right. Half full. Okay. Guaranteed. All right. Uh, Keen, wow. underneath Ooh. his turret, not going to let that one fall down. Is Oh my goodness, that was a weird uh, visual bug. But uh, Nuclear did get stunned against the wall with a prediction from Senen, who holds onto his flash. He didn't even have to use that to make the fancy play. Nicely done. Gets the flash out of Nuclear pretty comfortably. And this is uh, a really interesting build on Vladimir. This is something I've been talking about for, I don't know how many months now, but Leandre's Torment is so undervalued on every single single champion that can use AP because of the Madness passive. Not just the percent HP burn, the 10% the, the increased damage yeah. in addition to the stats. Absolutely bonkers. I'm I'm just waiting for the next Ezreal Evolution build that includes it with Luden's Echo. Yeah, the that, dream. That'll that'll be the dream. Yeah. Iceborne, Miramana, Luden's Leandris. There you go. We Take have that into to solo queue, guys. Take it into solo queue. Sounds like the perfect build. Sounds like a dream for Ezreal players. Mm -hmm. But really happy to see more AP champions building this item because it is just so, so, so valuable. And, and Nuggery also so can, well. uh, he can use his Sanguid Pool to get the slow happening also, so it does there activate you go. the extra Leandri's value. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't build it without having a uh, Rylai's Crystal Scepter or something like that along the side. Aiming in the mid lane, 
Just clearing Ooh. out minion waves, wanting to try and get something done here. Dread and Keen both looking for the dive. Yukal pressuring forward. Barrel gets shoved back. The flash is used, but I don't think it's going to be enough. World Ender comes down. There's the repel. As the Elise gets into the sky, has to flash Whoa. to get out of the way. Nagaru explodes! Aiming just does so much damn damage. As Canyon oh, finds Nuclear underneath the turret with a safeguard to get himself out. Showmaker, can you even flank this is the question. As Talia sets up the wall. Canyon, if he stays, he'd be made to pay for it. Doesn't oh want to do that. Killer God. Instinct comes down and aiming. He's smurfing. <laughs> He's smurfing against Dom One Gaming right now. The Afrika Freaks looking to get this 2-0. And I don't think this was what anyone expected Hell to be no. the potential result of Jonah today's Strong. match. Jonah Strong, the only person I spoke to that uh, expected this. He's one of our observers. He just looked at me straight faced when I asked him what, uh, he, who he Doesn't thought he was going to win. Doesn't he always vote for who's supposed to lose? I, he doesn't often get it right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not generally his way. Uh, this was seismic shove landing, guys, yeah. and it's... Pretty good news when it shot does. landing, true shot barrage comes out, but look at Senin's ultimate into the body slam. Ugh. Oh man. It reminds me of watching Life when My he was uh, making a name for himself yeah. on the Gragas. On the Gragas. Really nice play out of this young player from Afrika. The Gragas enthusiast in the naming right here, just taking. Yeah. That's, that's the called that was given nuclear to him. Being, uh, being told that he's not allowed to play League of Legends. This game. Nuclear got nuked. He did. Can you see? He's 4,000 gold behind. Absolutely. Wow. That's 1,000 more than 3,000. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to let you know that. Well, I mean, Ezreal has a really cheap build, guys. So uh, he might be able to get to that two item spike before the game's over. Well, unfortunately for them, though, the itemization that's coming in for Afrika, you can see the Hex Drinker now picked up also at by Kaisa. So Vladimir and LeBlanc are just going to have such a hard time yeah. dealing with this absolutely giga-fed Kaisa. Oh, yeah. And I love this as well. When you get a whole lot of extra money, transferring that into utility and defense as a carry is so much better than just getting more and more damage. Because, I mean, we saw aiming already does almost too much damage. So now, if he's really difficult to kill as well, yep. makes things a gigantic problem for Dom One Gaming. And the base levels are also valuable. It's a very unsung edge that you can have over opponents. Yeah. Where you're not just getting the extra skill point that does more damage. You're also getting the base HP, the base scaling on all the resistances. Everything is coming in, coming in together. As Mountain Drake, that's the next one that's going to spawn. But realistically... As soon as Elise and Atrox complete their next item, Afrika can stop playing ping pong, and they can likely just do a Baron bait to end the game. Well, there's a lot of pings from Dom One around this Baron area. I have a feeling that they've clued in on exactly what you were talking about. Beryl, gonna have to face check this one. Aiming finds him with the Void Seeker. Freaka Freaks just making sure that there is no vision for Dom One and that they will eventually have to face check. Aatrox is going to be taking Bertha. Watches his turret fall down, but it was very, very low regardless. And now, Talia going to shove this wave further forward, keep their eyes on Showmaker. And uh, right when that Baron was being considered, the blue trinket does come down. Beryl, he just can't face check, you know. He's not a tanky man on this Tom Kench. Aiming, taking a bit of poke, but... You're going to need to poke way more than that if you want to really do anything. That might help. True shot barrage. Dread almost explodes with one round. The ignite is ticking. He is going to fall. Goes into the sky, but that's a direct way. To oh, oh, my goodness. What? That was a weird pick off as Yukal not going to be able to flash out of that one. Aiming is going to kill the Ezreal one more time. But Afrika lose two out of nowhere, and Senen should be following here as well. What is it about Afrika in mid-games where their brains seem to fall out of their head? Uh, well, their champions die. That is, brains, that is certainly a big problem. Yeah, so when you get kicked that hard by Lee Sin, your brains may splatter. Yeah. Okay, so. Great capitalization uh, from Dom1, though. Afrika probably should have just been meandering around. They right. should have had a little bit more direction in what they were doing. You can nitpick all you want. Dom one with a team that managed to pull the trigger and make things happen. Yeah, and we're going to see how it all did come together. As the gold score now, it's only 3,000. Looks like aiming in dread. 
we're actually thinking about maybe some sort of a, a very cheesy Baron attempt. Look at this Lee Sin being so annoying. You know this Kai'Sa, she's so angry taking time out of her day. Exactly, she wants to be killing creeps. That's all she wants to be doing. Currently has a 40 CS advantage, and that ain't bad. Did you ever play Farmville? No. Good. Yeah, I was uh, pretty confident that I would enjoy that one. All right. Zafrika still with control of this area, regardless of that little hiccup. Well, it does look like Banshee's Veil will be the item of choice for Dread soon, as also Black Cleaver not too far away for Atrox. Surprise. Not going to find Aiming, who supercharges out of the way. Some quick movement, yeah. Not bad, not bad. Minute and 20 seconds now until the Mountain Dragon. Maybe Afrika just wants to play it super safe until that. That'll likely allow Talia and Elise to both get their second core item. Dread looking to clear out vision. Repel very early as Canyon tries to position for kick, but not going to be able to get there. Showmaker flashing, trying to get Dread. He's so squishy on this Elise as Yukal sets up the wall. The flash forward from Senen throws the barrel down, looking for the Tom Kench as Canyon has to flash to get out of the way. The teleport completes here from Kane and will now move towards the Baron Pit. A lot of flashes just blown on the side of Darm 1. This could be an opportunity for the Afrika Freaks, but they don't want to do it. Looks for the seismic shove as Noggery won't have a bar of it. He's going to move forward towards the Talia. The unexpected play in a game like this. Yeah, and you can see they keep checking on the Baron. They just want to ensure that Afrika is not currently on it. Now this game is getting closer and closer where the LeBlanc is becoming threatening, but when those resistance items come in for Afrika, Zanya's Hourglass seems like that's going to be the item of choice for Talia. Oh, we're taking a look at Blast of the Past. Yep, that's yeah, that uh, seemed, one combo. Uh, yeah, that, that was, uh, he pressed some buttons, and Elise died. And look at this kick. What? Yeah, that was when the kick was already moving. That's how kick flash works. That, yeah. Because uh, the kick animation start, you can't stop it. Okay. Now, coming back into live, though, Mountain Dragon is picked up. Another Infernal is spawning. If How the fast game... do you think this Baron goes down if the Freaker do start it? Uh, Pretty quick, right? I, I, would, I would probably say... I would probably say somewhere between 8 and 12 seconds. Yeah. Depending on how exactly it started. It's a real tough one. They're going to all go towards the bottom side of the map, though. So a freak, Freak's not interested in taking a Baron at all. And uh, I'm just going to give away the vision of the area. Aiming, good dodging here. As uh, he supercharges forward. This is uh, oh. something that Aiming does like to do is sending goes down to about half health. Remember, Afrika need to be really careful. Their health bars are not large. They have a lot of damage potential, yes. but not a lot of ability to take the damage. There's, uh, nope, someone are denied getting any damage onto this outer turret in the mid lane. They still need to play respectfully, but they've been able to take everything that they're able to yeah. without biting off more than they can chew. They've been playing this mid game as well as you can in a situation like this. And Afrika, they really need to start getting things done. And you have to really wonder how far away is Afrika from these item completions. It feels like they've been sitting on them for eons. Yeah. At this point, it looks like, okay, well, I just got my answer on Dread. Yep, six As Convergence coming in for Senen. He's gonna recall Banshee's Veil now picked up alongside another control board. And so this will probably be the recall on Talia, maybe after Golems? Never mind, I don't know what Yukal is waiting for, for the Zanya's Hourglass. Perhaps just wants to utilize the stopwatch and then buy Zanya's immediately thereafter. Yep, refresh the cooldown Yeah, for refresh free. the cooldown for free. And so this is likely just going to be the Baron Bait. Now remember, if they start it with like three members, the Kai'Sa, it's probably around 12 seconds for a Baron Shred, as long as Elise is present. And uh, as more of Malmodius was just completed as well, aiming four items on this Kaiser. He's ungodly bad. Level 15 as he supercharges to get in the way of a Baron auto attack or two and a true shot barrage. Sub up. This Dread needs to be really careful. Does have that Banshee's Veil so he can survive right. a little bit. That's a two man. As uh, the Weaver's Wall comes in. The Baron has been started. It is uh, it's exploding. Goodbye Baron. 
That is going to be taken. The Elise does secure it. Showmaker unable to get oh, there. Showmaker found him. The Ignite is going to tick down from Senen as well. Calculated damage is now Afrika. They have the man advantage, and Nugger is going to have to pull something oh, magnificent man. out of his hat if he wants to get this one done. Nuclear is going to be able to get one of the kills. Hemo play goes off, but Keen's found his way into the middle of the fight. Dread still weaving damage in as the Lee Sin has been taken. As Aiming's now found Nuclear, it feels like he's job this game to murder the Ezreal. Can't find him that time, but he'll take a Vladimir. And Darmwana down to only one member alive and everything going wrong this series. Yeah, and that's probably... Oh. Yep. Oh, Ezreal's going to make it away. One more Q is going to be there, oh. the Blast Cone, as uh, oh. Keen looking for these dodges. True Shot Barrage this is going to be avoided. This is one angry Santa Claus, I'll tell you that much. have vision on that, as uh, he was able to dodge exactly when he needed to, as uh, this was all just buying time for that inhibitor to go down in the mid lane. Well, uh, nuclear... Uh, I thought Kane was just going to umbral. I thought, yeah, I thought he was going to umbral with Q, but it wouldn't really matter. He can't get nuclear at that point anyway. He missed his, his golden opportunity. As Weaver's Wall came out, they end up getting the Baron, and then look at Senen. He's just been a monster yeah. this game with his casks. This series, honestly, I mean, his Rakan in game number yeah. one was fantastic as well. So uh, shout out to Senen, really coming into his own in this series. It's been a silent achiever for the Afrika Yeah, recently. he really has. And this was a really nice attempt by Nuggery to turn everything around. Dread going in there. And, I mean, yeah, but that's pretty much just how it works. Yeah. And uh, if you can wield a uh, fed Kaiser to this degree, it's pretty difficult to lose a game. Afrika Freaks just looking like they're in their ultimate comfort zone. With the picks that they have, and with the state of the game, they can move forward. The Afrika Freaks look good. It's been a bit of a meme, honestly. Afrika Freaks can win against any team and lose against any team. And this is the example of the ceiling that this team has. They are very, very skilled players. Sometimes they get a little bit ahead of themselves. Yeah. This game is an example of what happens when you play hyper-aggressively and it pays off. Yeah, and you have a Kai'Sa that is mega fed. Is is giga fed. Yeah. All right. And uh, this is uh this is what Ezreal looks like in other regions. I'm pretty sure. Ezreal doesn't look like this <laughs> in uh in the LCK often. Are you often trying, it's like are you trying to make a meme right now, or are you trying to say like NA Ezreal? No. Oh, okay. I'm not saying anything like oh, that at all. EU Ezreal. Yeah. Uh, I mean, oh yeah. All right, we, we got it out of him. It's not. It's not. Atlas what, prefers that's not NA what, over EU. What I'm saying is the Ezreals that we have in the LCK are just different. I get it. It's yeah, fine. Uh -huh. Different in what way? Um, let's just have a look at the team fight here. Oh though, yeah, sure. Uh, aiming does a lot of damage with the Q. As Keen is, he, I mean, he's he's struggling to eventually move that that angry vampire off the bottom tier three turret. Showmaker getting chunk. Oh really wow, high. that seismic shove. The oh, fadeaway is so good. As Senen does find it, the Void Seeker enough to take down the Tom Kench before he can even think to press the Grey Health button. All three inhibitors will be falling here as Nogari desperately trying to find enough Tides of Blood, but he just can't get enough. He hasn't been able to scale. He hasn't been able to pick up any of the items. And the Afrika Freaks are just going to eradicate this base of any structures. All of the inhibitors go down, the Nexus turrets, the next things on Afrika's minds. As a 9,000 gold lead is in, 11, 0, and 2 for the six side yeah. of Kaisa. They're going to back up. Yeah. They're going to back up now. They're just going to get this Infernal Dragon. Let's take a look at Kaisa. 337 and 28 AP. Hey, we're focusing the right champion. Yeah, we are. This is, wow, 60 AD. Did she just get 60 AD? Yeah, just got 60 AD. Must be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Seems like a good time to be the Kaiser. You know you know, you know, know what image I'm thinking of in my head right now? Well, it's certainly not this one. Okay, Tom Kent just got absolutely blown up. It's not one I want to think about. Well, I was actually thinking of the fact that there was vision on that uh, dragon pit at the time of the yeah. dragon being taken and uh, the look on Nuclear's face when he witnessed 60 extra okay. AD without an extra <laughs> item pickup. You like that, 60 AD? <laughs> you know the image of the person leaning forward with, like, the chicken arms and it's saying something that's, like, totally ridiculous? <laughs> no. You don't know which one I'm talking about? Uh, I like it, though. Oh, man. So 
Sorry. All right, I'll show you after. Yeah, you'll have to show. Show us on the way to the city. Oh yes, we're going Sunday. Yeah, Sunday. All right, Sunday. We're Don't gonna cancel. We're gonna probably need. Uh, I mean, we may need to cancel together um, because we might just be here. As nuclear is uh, not gonna die just this once. Still taking so much damage, Amy. Amy? Still alive for the moment, but Showmaker does finish that one off. Now, it might be a more even fight as Noggery goes into his Zonyas. Senen looks for the body slam, doesn't find it. Great knock up from Keen though. Secures the kill on the Vladimir, oh! and bounces forward. Murders the LeBlanc, and now under the turret, the Tom Kench can do nothing. Nexus turret number two goes down. Yes, they got a lot of money from killing Aiming, but it's still a 2-0 for the Afrika Freaks. And what a big win for Afrika, but not even just for Afrika, for every other team on <laughs> the west side yeah. of the bracket as Damwon will not be able to get the two-game gap. Nope. They are, in fact, going to be uh, relegated to a one-game gap between a whole bunch of teams now. This is really silly. Having a look at the standings before today, we had four teams on eight and five, one team on nine and five, another team on nine and four, and Darmon out in the lead on 10 and three. Now they move down to 10 and four, but Afrika Freaks on nine and five, SKT, on nine and five. <laughs> it is just crazy at the top of the standings. Yeah. Four losses and five losses, I believe, for, yeah, the top six teams. Every team just wants to go to Worlds. Well, I mean, that is generally it. But, I mean, in seasons past, every team's wanted to go to Worlds. But uh, there was often three teams that were out in front. I, I know, just, two teams. I, I just found out oh, yeah. something. What did you okay. find out? Do you know where Worlds is this year? Do I know where it is? Yeah. Yeah. Where? In Europe. Okay. Gen airplanes don't fly there. Don't they? I don't think they do. Sp that, what I about that guy with that incredible Gen Air no. meme that was like six paragraphs long? I, I don't think they fly there. I think that's actually why Gen Air is cho they are choosing voluntarily. Oh, Did you ever no. notice that when they go to the relegation matches, they just dismantle their opposition, okay? Yeah, they do, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so th th this is a voluntary choice. They have complete autonomy over their position in the standings. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, just thought I'd fill you in there. Well, I mean... I might be wrong, by the I'm way. A little bit the mind blown. I'm yeah. a little bit mind-blown. I'm a little bit mind-blown, but it does, it does make sense, you know? <laughs> Makes considerable sense. It's all coming together now. As uh, today's games didn't so much, Aiming looking extremely happy after that victory. He was the most fair that you could ever be. He was having the, the fun time in uh, League of Legends as uh, Buff Akali High Mango. Hey man, uh, we're probably not going to be buffing Akali. We just just did that. And uh, she's been banned both of these games because she's still strong. Does she need to be buffed again? I don't think so. She needs to, well, she's going to get changed a couple more times, Alice. It's only 9.15. Ah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. We need. We got to. nine, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we're reworking her once a patch. Is that the plan? Is that I, a cycle? I do believe so. Something like something, that. Something to that degree. I know you've got a pretty good relationship with the balance. Oh, team, absolutely. So. Yeah. Just wait till next patch. Maokai plus two AD. Oh, oh, oh. yeah. He Slow already down. has the highest base AD in the game. Slow down there, Atlas. That is ludicrous. All right. Well, Canyon. And. Uh, Nuggery, they're trying to tame this Darken right here. Now, honestly, had... Whoa. You all right? Uh, my microphone just died. I can, I can still... Oh, that's because you oh, turned okay. it all I the way down. It, oh, man, I got really yeah. scared. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, you're but okay. But had Afrika... Now, this was actually really interesting, this entire game with Yukel. His lane movement and everything, he was really, really trying to be a team player, even in moments where it wasn't that correct, like the one just prior to this. And it allowed... Dom Juan to have a fighting chance because of that mess up in top lane where they just chain fed kills temporarily. But it was all brought back right here in the mid lane as Senen with the body slam and the cask. I mean, he just set up so he many. He self alley ooped. He self alley ooped his body slam. That was, that was so what did you sexy. Vote for? Uh, I voted for Senen and I voted. In your on your behalf for Senen. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, that's correct. I thought you would I thought you would have been a betrayer and just voted for Keen. Absolutely. You probably know Senen's not going to get it. Oh, he's definitely going to get it. 
He's There's not no way that Sinner does it. He's not going to he get it. He played out of his mind this he, game. He did, and he deserves it, but he's not going to get it. You already know. All right. Well, that's Although it. it does seem to be showing a lot of his highlights. Yeah. This might be... And this be, is the low light. <laughs> that's the low light, right? Yeah. Take a look at this. Watch, watch how he just convinces LeBlanc. This is like a Jedi mind trick. It's like, you do not want to be here. Yeah. And picks up the kill with the last tick of a guy. The best players use the last tick of a guy. Exactly. As Nuggery, he went for a last stand right here, was not able to do anything. Keen seemingly mistiming that knockup, but nonetheless, everything was fine. Aiming flashes over the wall. And then we're not going to talk about Keen's failed attempt to <laughs> kill Nuclear. <laughs> You can hear some of the voice comms here. Is it okay? Is it okay? He said there's no flash. Or Ezreal, no flash. I don't want to know what he just said. Something about death. Ah. I don't know. I don't know what he be. Why would he be talking about death? I don't know. That's real strange. But these damage numbers, not so strange. The Kaiser did a lot. Nagari did a lot. You know what? For Nogari, it was not quite enough. The Gragas did a lot, okay? Give him some credit. Yeah. He was catching up there with the Elise. Damn right he was. And uh, the Elise was pretty active in the early game. So Dread getting around this map, getting stuff done. His Elise is uh, certainly hit or miss because he builds extraordinarily squishily. And right. then, uh, I mean, Elise just generally does, right? But he often puts himself in some pretty dicey scenarios. Uh, regardless of which champion he's playing, aiming picks up the MVP on the Kaiser, but we all know who the real MVP was. Yeah, let's take a look. Look at look at there who's making the plays. Yeah, the body who's slam. Who's making the plays? <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna observe the Sen and highlight reel as aiming picks yeah, up yeah, all yeah. the kills. Okay, okay. Dread. Yeah, nicely done, Dread. Hold on. Oh wait, no, no, no. He flashes a wall here. Now, see, on your screen, you think he's running from UCAL and aiming, but really there was a Gragas just behind him. Now, let's yeah. say, watch, 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 all right, this doesn't count. Gameplay. This was after Senen just saved the world against the Vladimir, okay? Yeah. Exactly what happened. This whole fight transpires. We did some auto attack canceling. You know, there's some, some, some things, <coughs> you know? You know what, though? This season, we really haven't had too many of these kind of MVPs, which is really That's nice. true. And, I mean, look, you look at it, he That's was 11 0 yes. moving into the last team fight. So it was pretty impressive stuff. We are going to throw it over to Jisun, though, because we have an MVP interview, so here's the translation. Thank you very much, guys. This is the MVP translation, and we'll be hearing from Keen, aiming from Africa, stepping up to the fourth place. It was a matchup against the first place team Tamon. Keen, how was this match? It's a big relief that we got the 2 0 win, and today's game was really hard for us. So, you also mentioned that Tamon game, a matchup against Tamon will be the biggest obstacle. So, what did you mainly focus on? We tried to play around the bot lane. So I think we have seen the best performance from Afrika so far. So game number one, Renekton and Keen. Well, you were going up against Nagris Camille, which is which was undefeated so far. So what did you think of the matchup? Well, blind pick Renekton is a bit risky because he has a lot of counter picks. But at the same time, when I saw Nagris locking in Camille, I was a bit happy. So Dread played a list in both two games. So what kind of strategy did you guys prepare? Well, 
This is one of his confidence picks, so we just wanted to play around his confidence. And Dredd also said that he doesn't really get why you got the MVP in game number one. Do you agree with him? Well, I actually found it out after the end of the game number two, but I'm a little bit frustrated because a lot of our players are actually complaining about it. So we have the final team fight replay over here. So, the Hamas gaming players are also very fast with the backup. Well, Kamin was going in too much, so we just wanted to just focus on Camille first to just like melt her down and then just move on to the another damage dealer. So I think that's how we won the team fight. And however, in the end of the game, Yuka was making a call to make everybody just back because there was no minion wave remaining. But no one actually did. Why was that? I think we were all just concentrating so much, looking on our own skills, the cooldowns. So I think we were a little bit lucky to close out the game at that moment. In game number two, it was all about the bot lane. There were a lot of actions in the early games. So what do you think about the composition? Kaiza is one of my confidence picks, so I was just confidently locking it in. And Gragas is a flex pick for jungle and support, so I was quite confident with all over, all over our composition. So at the first place, we weren't really deciding whether we're going to put it in the jungler or the support. So we have another replay. Team fight in the bot lane, or rather, a 2v2 in bot lane. So, who started it? So, as soon as Ezreal uses his arcane shift, we can just like fight back with the body slam and then go in with my ultimate. Whose call was that? I mainly do the calls and Senan just listens to me mainly. And Kaisa got 10 kills in 13 minute mark of the game. So when did you feel like you were going to really win this game for sure? When I got about 5 kills and took down the top turrets, I thought like this game is ours. However, in the very last fight, you just went in too much. Maybe you were being a little bit confident or excited. Well, that's one of my play style as well. I just go in too much sometimes, but I think that's one of my charming points, you know. So your next opponent will be SK Telecom. They're on the eighth match win streak. It's gonna be a matchup to decide third and fourth place. So recently, SKT, their momentum is like really huge. But we are really good at taking the teams with great momentum, so it's gonna be a winnable one. And Amy would like to add on to that. Just like we did, we are good at fights, and if we get out rid of our mistakes, I think we can give our best shot. So this will be the end of the interview with Keen, Amy from Africa, and I'm going to pass it back to our caster. Thank you. Thank you so much, chi -sun, for your wonderful translation. Once again, as uh, Aiming and Keen, brilliant performances here today. However, I think Senen probably deserved to be up there as well. A young prodigy on that Gragas. Brilliant performance to make sure that Aiming was able to become that uh, artillery force that he was in the yeah. game. And I mean, he had a really good performance on the Kai'Sa, and Kai'Sa has been popping up a little bit more often. Yeah. As she's pretty good against a lot of the meta picks, and really glad that we get to see AA Trox again today. Yeah. The, the, uh, the, the nuffed? The nuffed. Oh, yeah. yeah. The yeah. nuffed AA Trox. Right. Uh, doesn't revive, by the way. Doesn't revive, just yeah. heals for more, and, and revive never mattered anyway. Yeah. Actually, I have a feeling that if in that game the revive mechanic was still there, the game wouldn't have changed. No, it wouldn't. Yeah. It almost never would have, you know? Now, let's take a look at the standings, though, because some things have changed.
They have. Okay, some losses and wins have been changed. And now everyone on this side, barring Dom One Gaming, is at nine wins. Ooh, Griffin. Yeah, Griffin on and the King east Zone. side. Have they ever been on the east side? Like ever? Uh, oh man. I mean, ever since they came into the LCK, I'm pretty sure that they've always been a West Side team. They're getting a, a met. Whoa, that's really yeah. That's that's uh, that's. This scary. is some topsy turvy yeah, times we're living that's in. Definitely weird. Well, they're also only two wins away. Yeah, and you know from what? From the next team, Speaking right? Speaking about Griffin, yeah, they're going to be playing tomorrow night. Exactly, with Sandbox Gaming. That is, of course, going to be brought to you by the wonderful Brendan Valdez. Valdez. And LS. Brendan Valdez Valdez? Yeah, because his nickname's Valdez oh, and his last name's Oh, I see what you did Valdez. there. And yeah. KT Rolster and Hanwell. This is actually the cr most crucial match. And what better match number than 69 for this one? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> this decides I, I completely who agree. goes down there. I'm pretty sure the Jim. numbers are relevant, but the match is extremely important. Because it's yeah. not likely that they pick up wins against the other teams here in the LCK. However... The head-to-head -head between those two squads is paramount. That is going to be coming at you tomorrow. I'm going to be watching alongside you in Twitch chat, guys. But for today, for day number one, that will be that. Good night. We'll see you tomorrow. You take me higher when I feel low. Make my world brighter. I keep on rolling, but with your fuel, you're like my gasoline that makes my dream come true. Cause it's just the beginning. This one.